Sister Rosetta Thorpe, 1915 to 1973. Rosetta was born on March 20th, 1915 as Rosetta Newbin in Cotton Plant, Arkansas. I'd like to begin this episode with a quote about Rosetta that, as we shall see, is so perfect and true. Quote, plugged into an electric guitar in the late 1930s and became a rock star before men considered the pioneers of rock and roll had dreamed of doing so. She's the godmother of rock and roll who influenced every musician traditionally identified with helping to launch the genre during the 1950s. Once New York disc jockey Alan Freed renamed rhythm and blues rock and roll, a cultural explosion changed the course of modern music. The names of those early pioneers became legend. Little Richard, Bill Haley and the Comets, Fats Domino, Elvis Presley, Bo Diddley, Chuck Berry, just to name a few. But one name was forgotten, the one who influenced them all, possibly the most important one of all, Sister Rosetta Tharp. Sister Rosetta mixed gospel, rhythm and blues with electric guitar solos that were a prototype of the classic rock solos that would become the foundation of rock and roll. Listen to the introduction in 1944, Strange Things Happening Every Day. This is 10 years before rock and roll was even named. Her guitar technique was cited to have a profound effect on not only the guitar players of the 50s, but into the 60s, with guitar legends Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck, Keith Richards, and so many more. The recording registry of the Library of Congress noted that her 1944 song, Down by the Riverside, was a major influence in the style of music known as rhythm and blues, a mix of blues and gospel. Down my heavy load. Down by the riverside. Oh, yes. Down by the riverside. You know. Down by the riverside. Gonna lay down my heavy load. Down by the riverside. You said it was Many people believe the song I mentioned earlier, Strange Things Happening Every Day, was the precursor, even possibly the first rock and roll recording. We heard the introduction, now let's listen to a little bit more. Of 2018, Rosetta was finally introduced into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Rosetta was born in Arkansas to parents who picked cotton for a living. Both were musicians. However, it was her mother who was her main influence as she played the mandolin and sang gospel music in her church. In this church, women were encouraged to sing, teach, dance in praise of God. Next to her mother, at the age of six, she started to sing and play the guitar, actually a child prodigy. 
At this young age, she was traveling with her mother across the southern United States, eventually moving to Chicago, becoming famous in the black community. As history has shown us, many blues musicians left the home of the blues, the Mississippi Delta, moving up north to escape racism rampant in the south. Blues spread from the Delta to Chicago to Kansas City, where in the 1930s, blues and blues clubs were everywhere. From there, the blues and jazz spread all around the world. In countless books and documentaries, we see how blues solos were improvised to fill in the space, holes, as the early singers would rest between phrases. The musicians would fill these gaps with little phrases of their own, improvising short melodies. These phrases, these little fill-ins, would imitate the singer's practice of bending notes to express sadness and emotion. By also bending the notes, especially the third and seventh of the major scale, known as the blues notes, these instrumental fill-ins would grow into complete solos. All the improvised solos we hear to this day in blues, jazz, rock, country, pop, etc., all genres of music which feature improvised solos. The birth of truly American music, America's contribution to music, born in the music of the plantation, slaves, mixing with Creole and country music of the southern United States. Sister Rosetta mixed this improvised blues style with gospel, creating rhythm and blues and eventually rock and roll. In 1934, at the age of 19, Rosetta married Thomas Tharp, a preacher who accompanied her and her mother on tours. In 1938, she left Mr. Tharp, and her and her mother left for New York City. Although marrying a few more times, she kept the name Tharp. In New York City, she recorded four songs for Decker Records. They are Rock Me, That's All, My Man and I, and The Lonesome Road, becoming the first mainstream gospel hits. These songs were known to be a great influence on Chuck Berry, Fats Domino, Lil Richard, Elvis Presley, and Jerry Lee Lewis, to name a few. Fame grew and grew with every performance, such as with Cab Calloway at Carnegie Hall and nightclubs mixing gospel, jazz, rhythm, and blues. Naturally, performing in secular settings upset many of the gospel purists. As early as 1942, a music critic referencing the song Rock Me as an example of Sister Tharp's rock and roll spiritual singing. As we listen to this excerpt, remember this is 1938, and this is definitely rock and roll. Listen to those guitar fill-ins. They would fit perfectly in any rock song today. Now, won't you hear me swinging? Hear the words that I'm singing. Mudge my soul with water from on high. While the world of love is around me, evil thoughts do bite me. Oh, if you leave me, I will die. You just hide me in my bosom. Tell the sun the life is over in the cradle. Now love, only be me, hell I want no more, then you take me to your blessed home above, see, I'm maintaining, I just go on uncomplaining, but before this time, another year, oh, my life may all forsake me, and death may overtake me. But if I am with him, I have no need to fear. You just hide me in thy bosom, tell us time of life is over, oh, rock me in the cradle. Now love, oh, defeat me, and I want no more, then 
you take me to your blessed home above. Oh, make my journey brighter. You just make my burden lighter. Help me to do good wherever I can. Oh, let thy presence thrill me. Thou loving kindness fill me. Then you hold me in the hollow of thy hand. So we see this was a decade before disc jockey Alan Freed renamed rhythm and blues rock and roll. The term had been around actually for a sexual reference, but it was Alan Freed who popularized it. Here's some quotes about Alan Freed. He had renamed rhythm and blues to avoid the racial stigma he thought inherent in the classification. And a new phrase, rock and roll, long used as a sexual metaphor, now described the music he played. Another quote. <clears throat> he first conquered Cleveland over WJW and then moved his show to New York's flagship Winds. Allen not only spun the music, he wrote it, promoted it, starred in its early movies, and became one of its first scapegoats. There was a very famous trial where he was convicted of taking payola, in other words, money to play records. Sometimes he's called the father of rock and roll because of his promotion of the style of music and his introduction of the phrase rock and roll in reference to the musical genre. Many believe the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is in Cleveland because that is where Alan Freed named it on his radio show before moving to New York City. My personal belief is the one song that helped spread rock and roll throughout the country is Bill Haley and the Comets Rock Around the Clock because it opened up the movie called Blackboard Jungle, a movie about teenagers in a rough New York City high school. It had a major star, Glenn Ford. This song, so prominent in a movie dealing with teenagers, released in 1955, spread the culture of rock and roll throughout the United States and eventually the world. As mentioned earlier, this set off a cultural revolution that not, not only changed music, but had a profound effect on race relations. The impact of this music bringing the races together. Before this, it was unthinkable that you would have mixed races at a concert, but that's just what happened at these early rock and roll shows. Alan Freed's rock and roll shows at the Brooklyn Fox Theater are legendary. We would see a similar happening, a revolution in 1964, with the arrival of the Beatles in America. Their appearance on the Ed Sullivan TV variety show in February 1964 not only once again changed the course of music, but the culture of people all around the world. As with the advent of rock and roll 10 years earlier, this phenomenon has been studied, analyzed, even to this day. In interviews and articles, countless famous musicians, as well as just normal young people, had their lives changed that night in 1964. All this we can trace back to Sister Rosetta. At the famous Apollo Theater in Harlem, New York City, they had guitar battles at which Sister Rosetta was considered a major force equal to all who entered. In 1944, Strange Things Happening Every Day has been called the first rock and roll record. An example of, of Sister Rosetta's popularity is that 25,000 people paid to see her third marriage to her manager, Russell Morrison, in Washington, D.C. in 1951. A perfect example of Rosetta's influence on the future of rock and roll is in the following story. One of the founding fathers of rock and roll, Little Richard, Richard Pediman, said Rosetta was his favorite singer as a child. In 1947, she heard Richard sing and invited him to sing with her on stage. After the performance, she paid him, which gave him the desire to become a performer, which would have a major influence on the course of modern music. Roseanne Cash told Larry King that Sister Rosetta was Johnny Cash's favorite singer.
A National Public Radio article commented in 2017 that rock and roll was bred between the church and the nightclubs in the soul of a black woman in the 1940s named Sister Rosetta Tharp. Tharp's performances were curtailed by a stroke in 1970, after which one of her legs was amputated as a result of complications from diabetes. On October 9, 1973, the eve of a recording session, she died in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania as a result of another stroke. She is buried at Northwood Cemetery in Philadelphia. As we have just heard, Sister Rosetta Tharp's influence on the course of music cannot be overstated. Probably the most important contributor to the development of rhythm and blues and rock and roll. Mostly overlooked due to the fact of being a woman and a woman of color. In the description of this episode, I have links to some of her many videos on YouTube. I'd like to leave you with this quote by Mary Davis. Music unwraps the heart, sings out the prayer, dances the spirit, and opens the soul. Thank you for listening. Take care. Joe.